it's July 4th. That's why we're red, white, and blue today. Can you guys go ahead and unmute and just sort of say hello to each other? Hi, everybody. It's Thomas in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, this is Dodie, Southern California. Good morning. It's Michelle in Oregon. Hi, it's Jim in Charlotte, North Carolina. Great. Awesome. It's good to see you, Dodie. <laughs> Okay, great. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and begin our opening prayer. So go ahead and close your eyes. And go ahead and breathe in. All the way to the top of your head. And then breathing slowly and controlled all the way out. And then breathing all the way in, filling up your whole body all the way to the top of your head, your full lungs, your whole body with oxygen. Good, and then breathing all the way out. Very good, and then one more time, breathing all the way in. Filling your whole body up with oxygen, holding it at the top. And then breathing slowly and controlled all the way out. And imagining that there is a waterfall of sparkling white light falling down from heaven, cascading over your whole body and into the earth. And as you breathe, every cell of your body is absorbing the sparkling white light of the Holy Spirit. And as you breathe in around that waterfall of sparkling white light is a waterfall of sparkling baby pink light cascading down from heaven over your whole body and into the earth. And as you breathe, every cell of your body is absorbing the sparkling pink light of self-love. And breathing in very fully and breathing out around that waterfall of pink light is a waterfall of emerald green light falling down from heaven cascading over your whole body and into the earth. The light of healing and breathing, noticing that every part of your body is absorbing this emerald green light of healing. It's soaking it into your brain. Your face is glowing emerald green teeth are glowing emerald green. Your throat is glowing emerald green light of healing. And your chest is glowing emerald green. Your stomach emerald green. Your hips, your knees down to your fingertips and your toes. And as you breathe your whole body is glowing an emerald green light of healing. And let's call in and acknowledge our spirit guides, Jesus Christ, the Father and Mother God, the Mother Mary, and you can call in your loved ones that you want to join us here today, your loved ones who have crossed over and residing in the spirit realm, and your pets who have crossed over or joining you today to help you discover your true life purpose. Now, as you breathe in, we are calling in the great compassionate light, which is the cosmic energy that pervades every living thing on the planet. 
And we are asking that God channels through your brain today, through your heart, through your mind, and through your body. And that all wisdom and all clarity and all love be brought into your life today. Through this session, may you get aha moments and answers. And through your life, may God ceaselessly channel his and her joy, clarity and wisdom and compassion through every facet of your life. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes. Wonderful. So our Hawaiian phrase of the week is kia kahi noho ola. And that means living your life purpose. So kia kahi means soul purpose, a fixed reason for living. So go ahead and repeat that after me. Kia kahi. Kia. Very good. Kahi. Kia kahi. Kia kahi. So noho means to sit. Or stay, as in stay put. So say that with me. No ho. And ola, you'll remember, means life. Ola. Okay, so now let's say the whole thing, which is life purpose. Kia kahi. No ho. Ola. Kia kahi. No ho. Ola. And the way that you sign that is you have one palm that's vertical and flat. You make a V with your other fingers and then poke and turn. Poke and turn. Life purpose. Kiakahi noho ola. Life purpose. Life purpose. That's my life purpose. Okay, great. And welcome, Akemi, and welcome, Dodi. And uh, Dr. Rachel's here. That's awesome. And honey. Okay, this year, 2024, you're focusing on you. You're focusing only on your own thriving, your own joy, your own happiness, your own abundance, your own peace, your own creativity. You're bringing it into you. And so as part of that, we're starting a series called How to Find Your True Life Purpose. How much you thrive depends on how aligned you are to your life purpose. If you're not fulfilling your life purpose, you might thrive in one area, but then you fail in another area of your life. So an example is Steve Jobs. He abandoned his first wife and newborn daughter. And a few days after his daughter was born, he came to the hospital and said, that is not my kid. And then he went on, he built a $3 trillion company, and then he dies of cancer at age 56. If his life purpose was to build a company, he did it. But what if his life purpose was to have enough time to enjoy it? The reason why the basics of fulfilling your life purpose are so important. You cannot stray from the basics. It's because no matter how perfect you are, and Steve Jobs was a perfectionist, when you're not fulfilling your life purpose, you cannot make any mistakes. One mistake, and the world will never let you forget it. But when you are fulfilling your life purpose, you can make a bunch of mistakes and the whole world forgives you and says, oh, it's okay. You're still on the right track. You're learning. Okay, wait. Why is that? How come this person has to be perfect? The other person gets to make a bunch of mistakes. 
And it's because when you're fulfilling your life purpose, you're connected to the web of life. You meet the people you're supposed to meet. You find the opportunities you're supposed to find. The universe can hand you things easily. But when you're not fulfilling your life purpose, you're separated from the web of life. It does not benefit the universe to hand you anything because you're not using it to contribute to the greater good. So once you build your $3 trillion company, the universe has no use for you. You can die, doesn't matter. But if one person who is connected to the web of life loves you and you love them in return, all of a sudden, the universe can't let you die. You contribute to the greater good. And that is why God wants you to fulfill your life purpose so that you can live and thrive. God created your life purpose as a guarantee that as long as you try to follow it, you just try, that's enough to make sure that you're happy most of your life. Colossians 1.17 says, All things are held together inside God. God is the web of life. And you want to be in that web of life, in God. Romans 11.36 says, For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. You want to do things from the web of life through the web of life and for the web of life because then all things will be connected to you and that's what a life purpose does for you it connects you to all things so before we begin our exercise today i just wanted to open it up just to see if you had any comments or thoughts or questions that you wanted to share with the group and then we'll begin. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's get started. You want to bust out your journal. You know how it goes. So now we're going to talk about manifesting. Okay, manifesting means to create. So when I say I'm manifesting, I'm taking an idea or a wish and I'm making it real so that it becomes part of my physical reality. So instead of just thinking about something, I I have it. I made it. I created it. I made it a reality. I manifested it. So the first step in finding your true life purpose is naming something that you want to manifest right now in your life and just write that down in your journal and write down what it means on a tangible and concrete level. So example, if you want peace in your family, write that down, write down, I want a peace in my family, but also write down the tangible, concrete manifestation of that, like such as, you know, the house is very quiet, no one's fighting or arguing. I walk into the kitchen, no one needs anything from me. They just sort of stare at me blankly, like this owl. Okay, so right now you're going to go ahead and write down what that means on a tangible, concrete level. Okay, so then... How would getting what you want make you feel? So imagine yourself getting this thing that you want. All of a sudden you have it. What's your initial gut reaction? Okay, then after you have that gut reaction, what's your next reaction? And then what's your reaction after that? Sometimes you think getting what you want is you think it'll make you happy. Yes and no. Yes and no. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. So let me give you an example. One person, 
I'm going to call him Aaron, who did this exercise, wrote, he wanted a building that he owned to sell in a down market. And then it did. And instead of being relieved, he went out and he smoked crystal meth. So it turns out he was married to his stress. You know, stress keeps, keeps him on his toes. Without stress, he falls apart. So in other words, stress actually makes him happy. And without that stress, he's not happy. So in Aaron's case, iron sharpens iron. Money, which is made of paper, burns quickly. If you manifest your abundance, but you're not aligned with your abundance emotionally, you're going to sabotage it. And you don't know that until you actually sabotage it. So we want to make sure that you're aligned emotionally with your abundance. So if you want, which would help, please unmute and share what you want to manifest, how it'll make you feel. feel. And then everyone here is going to sort of help you double check your work. Okay. Um, so I am manifesting, uh, and we talked about this last time, um, more recurring income for my business you know, with recurring services. So how will that make me feel? Great. <laughs> Busy, excited, um, happy, uh, and energized. That's kind of how I'm feeling now. But I guess the other component was a certain amount of relief that that other component would be created too. Okay, good. Good. So we'll take the edge off. Okay, good. That sounds good. Does that sound good to everyone? Does anyone else want to share? <laughs> oh, I said that... Um... Oh, I wanted to make more money. And I said that I see that as my loan coming in. I see my surgical suite opening. I see my equipment being delivered. I see my bank account rising. I'm feeling relaxed about the finances. And I'm now in a place to help support others. And then I said I wanted a happy, healthy, and peaceful relationship with my children. And I see that as us laughing, having fun, the phone ringing for them to talk, take time to talk to me no matter where they are. I see us um, getting through conflicts with ease. I feel excitement as they enter my home. And I see us having fun talking and laughing as we cook. Okay, good. Okay, there's a lot of action, right, Dr. Rachel? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of activity and a lot of action. Okay, good. We're just noticing. Does anyone else want to share? Okay, let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one. So what you wrote down in your journal are your abundance feelings. So if you feel these feelings, it will help you attract your abundance. And so this might take you a little while to write down, but in your journal, you have to write down, I might not be ready, but I'm willing to feel energized, or I'm willing to feel busy, or I'm willing to feel happy about my kids coming over, or my kids calling. And that's why I'm manifesting. And then write down what you're manifesting. Now, if you're done writing, read it back to yourself. You know, read back what you wrote, the whole statement. I know, Thomas, you finished before everyone else. Did you want to share? Well, I get, I get, I think I get what you're getting at is you don't, it's not, I, I'll feel this way when it's feeling that way while which creates that attraction. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. That's right. 
we're trying to create momentum where sometimes there's not momentum because we get stuck in heavier vibrations. And so this is like, a, a it's not a trick, but it's a technique to keep moving forward even when, even when there's some heavy energies down here. Because no matter what, you're going to move forward. So you might as well move forward faster, right? We can choose how we feel. We don't have to wait for something that, to happen. Yes. And that's very difficult when we're wrestling, when we're wrestling with heavy energies. And so, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I want to just make a comment that, yeah, it can be difficult to choose how you feel. You know, like if, um, you know, it's like they, when people say, you know, if you're going out to do a performance or you're going out for a championship game and, you know, people say, well, you know, they're not, they may experience nervous, but most athletes will say, oh, I'm excited. So they're trying to channel the energy into an excitement, but it's, it can be considered nervous energy, butterflies, all that kind of stuff. So it's almost like they can't really control the energy, but what they can control is, is trying to focus their mind on what they're going to do with it or how they're going to experience it. But yes. it's difficult to just say you can choose your feelings. You kind of, you, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. And so what you make it mean. Yes. And it's almost like you can take the, all the energy you're using to feel depressed and just take that same energy and then just reroute it to feel another emotion. So if you think of feelings as a highway, not as a state of being that you have to accept, it's just energy you're putting into depression, you can just reroute that energy and put it into a different emotion. And that's where the effort, there is some effort, the willingness to feel something else comes in. It's an effort. It's just like working out every day. You don't feel like it, but you make yourself and you reroute it. So we're going to come right back to this one real quick after a quick explanation. So you don't actually have to feel these feelings to attract your abundance. You just have to be willing to feel them. And then the universe will line up opportunities for you to feel them. You can take the opportunity or you can pass. But as long as you stay willing to feel them, the universe will keep lining up the opportunities for you to feel them. Does that make sense? The point is not to immediately go out into life and force yourself to feel these abundance feelings. That's not the point. The point is to be willing to feel them. And then you let life make you feel them. The point is for you to be open to all the possibilities out there. There isn't one way to feel happy or one way to feel joyful or relaxed. It turns out that stress can make certain people feel alive. And if that's you, the universe will place a crazy challenge in front of you and then set it up so that you magically overcome that challenge. And that combination of stress and winning is what makes you truly happy. So you have to put yourself in a position where the universe can set you up. And being willing to feel something very specific, which is your abundance feelings, is how you let the universe know, okay, God, set me up. We're just doing the setup here. We're just setting everything up.
So what do you, do any of you have any thoughts about this before we go to the next step? Um, it's important to just recognize whatever it is that you're working to manifest, you know, to really have the experience, um, you know, to feel how that feels. And sometimes we don't know, we might not know how it feels. So we have to use our imagination to think, well, how would that feel? How would it feel to be wealthy? How would it feel to be healthy? How would it feel to be in love? How would it feel to, you know, um, be to feel free? All the di different things we've all talked about before, you know. So how does it really feel? Because sometimes we're so used to feeling uh, how we're our current experience that we almost don't even know how it feels like to have a different experience. So you have to use that imagination, you know, to make it real thanks it's great does anyone else have any thoughts yeah everything begins with a thought anyway so why not imagine it and make it feel real and then eventually things become real or it's a physical real but um you know and by setting up there's a uh, almost a sense of preparation and certainty that you're preparing for that to come. So it's it's an act of faith as well. Yes, and it's an invitation. You're inviting God to set you up. You're inviting the universe to do the setup for you. You're asking to be set up by your angels by God, by the universe. Okay, your next step now is to practice these feelings, but how are you going to feel these abundance feelings? Like, what do you need to do or what do you need to change in order to feel that way? And it doesn't have to be related to what you want to manifest. So for example, if Dodie needs to feel joy to heal her body, she doesn't have to feel joyful about going to the doctor. She just needs to feel joy, period. It's the emotion itself that serves as the foundation, as the base, so the universe can set her up to have her body healed. So here's an example. This guy at my CrossFit gym he was on all these dating apps and the whole time <laughs> he's trying to lose weight because he doesn't feel attractive. So finally, he quits his job. He starts his own company and that gives him a boost of confidence. And immediately he's so busy, he can't even date. He just started his own company and then he meets the love of his life. He falls madly in love. And she was a friend of a friend and they had already known each other for five years. He just never thought of asking her out. His future wife was in front of his face the whole time. But the universe could only set him up when he started practicing his abundance feelings. So right now, take a moment and think to yourself, what can you do or what do you need to change? in order to feel your abundance feelings. And write down three things or three action steps that are, that's going to make you feel that way. And remember, you have to feel it before the universe can set you up. Just like he was trying to lose weight to date, but actually all he had to do was, was quit his job and start his own company. And that's how he pushed himself into that feeling, that boost of confidence. So you've got to get yourself into that state and then the universe, boom, sets you up. Okay. Okay, so your homework is to do these three things so that emotionally you're aligned with your abundance. So we're going to move on to the next section. You can keep writing if you want. <clears throat> Your abundance exists on four levels. 
So the first is physical, which is what you actually want. For example, I want a house. It also exists on the second level, which is emotionally. Emotionally, which is how it will make you feel. For example, it'll make me feel secure. And then mentally, which is what you believe you deserve. So for example, I believe I deserve to have it paid off with cash, no mortgage. And then spiritual, what your soul's learning in the process of getting what you want. So for example, my soul is learning how to be independent. Now, when all four of these things are lined up, you have a house which makes you feel secure and you deserve to pay it off with cash and your soul is learning how to be independent, then you're living your life purpose. If one of these things is missing, you have the house, it's paid off, but you don't feel secure, you feel lonely or you're needy and you need someone to come live with you and take care of you, then you will lose the house or the house will become meaningless to you. Why? Because you're not living your life purpose. And the purpose of you getting a house is for you to live your life purpose. If you're not living your life purpose, your soul doesn't need the house anymore. And your ego may be crying, what happened to my house? But your soul is like, it's okay. Let it go. We'll find another way for you to fulfill your life purpose. And your ego is like, I don't care about my life purpose. I want my house back. And your soul is like, I care about your life purpose. And I outrank you. God designed it this way. It's in the Bible that all things are created for good. Meaning everything you do was meant for the sake of goodness. In your core, you're good. You are goodness embodied. And good outranks everything else in the universe. When you are good, you outrank everything else in the universe. And you say, oh, I'm not seeing it. Stay the course. Time is the God of all truth. You will see that when you are fulfilling your life purpose, all things work in your favor, even mistakes. As long as you do the setup, if you make a mistake, the universe can loop it back around and make it work in your favor. Because all things return back to their foundation in order to grow. As long as you have a foundation, everything that grows out of you is good. Even if you chop off the results, it just regrows. And what we we're doing today is we're building the first foundation of your abundance, which is your emotions. Next month, we're going to work on the second foundation, which is your beliefs. The following month, we're going to work on your third foundation, which is your spiritual growth. And when all three of these are set up correctly, finally, the fourth foundation happens on its own. That's when you manifest what you want on a physical level. And when you manifest it, you do it the right way, meaning you have a solid foundation so that if you lose it, you easily get it back. Or if you make a mistake or if it gets chopped up, it just regrows back stronger. The foundation is the important, the setup. Everything else changes with the wind. Life happens. But if you have that foundation, that setup, it doesn't matter. You can always regain back everything that you lose. Do you have any thoughts before we, we, we move on and do our closing prayer? Yeah, it was really, really, this is great. I'm looking forward to doing going through the next doing this all month and then the next month and the next the whole series sounds great awesome so this month you're just practicing your emotional abundance for 30 days and then next month we're going to do the beliefs 
Does anyone else have any other comments? It's like we say, oh, this is what I want to manifest. Oh, my sense is we want to look at why. Because the purpose of manifesting that needs to be in line with our deeper purpose. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. Because your ego wants something, but it's only one part of four parts of you. You have your emotions, your mind, what you believe you're worth, and you have your soul. And so your ego only has one vote. You have three other votes that outrank your ego. So you have to work with all of them in order to manifest what you want. Because your soul has to be like, it has to make sense. It has to, I have to be learning something. I have to be fulfilling my purpose. And your heart is like, but I have to feel it. Like you got it, but I don't even feel it. And your mind goes, I don't believe it, that, that I'm, I'm worth that. So you have to convince all four parts of you that this is worth it to manifest it and live it in your life. And your life purpose ties all that in together. Okay. So I'd like to do an extended meditation today for a closing prayer that goes through the layers of your feelings. Are you guys ready for that? Okay, let's try it out. So go ahead and close your eyes. And then breathe in all the way up to the top of your head. And then breathing out. And notice that around you are clarity angels surrounding the room that you're in. And they're absolutely translucent. And they're sending you all this energy of clarity. Imagine that thing that you want right in front of you, out of reach, but right there. Just see it right in front of you. And when you look at it, knowing that you don't yet have it, what is the first feeling that comes to mind? The very first feeling. And go with that feeling, breathing in. Feel that feeling fully, bring it into your body. Name the feeling in your mind. What is the name of that feeling? Bring that feeling into your body by breathing it into your body and notice how that feeling feels. Notice how your body feels. Now staying very open, ask yourself, what is the feeling underneath this feeling? The feeling underneath this feeling. With your eyes still closed, let your body drop through and feel the feeling underneath this feeling. Now, even if it's a negative feeling, let your body feel that feeling. Just explore it. Feelings are like flavors of ice cream. Let yourself taste what that feeling feels like. And if you just surrender to that feeling, just let it overcome you. What would happen? Just imagine what would happen if you surrender to that feeling. Even if you would die, just imagine that and let it happen. Good, staying fit. Ask yourself, what is the 
feeling underneath this feeling? What would happen if you just gave into that feeling, let it overtake your whole body? You surrendered. You stayed so open. What is the next thing that would happen? The feeling underneath that. Breathing in, letting scenes come into your mind like a movie in your mind. Staying very open, what would be the feeling underneath that feeling? Let your body drop through and feel what it feels like to feel that feeling. Breathing in and out deeply. Let your spirit guide or God or Jesus give you a message now. Stay very still and hear the message. Very good. And now we pray that these clarity angels will surround us for the next month before we meet again. That you will have the wisdom, the clarity, the youthfulness, the energy to continue this path and that you will have help with progress. And we pray that we become these channels of wisdom and light and energy and youthfulness. Until we meet again in a month, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you very much for praying with us. Now, whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. It's time for a round of goodbyes. You can unmute and say goodbye whenever you're ready. Thanks, everyone, for uh, attending and sharing and um this is great thank you pastor vicky so much uh, i'm excited and at the same time i feel calm and relaxed yes goodbye everybody and have a um good couple weeks thank you vicky thanks yep. thank you vicky thank you everybody everybody for being here today and uh, yeah awesome Thank you, Pastor Vicki. I'm excited to see what the next four weeks are going to bring for all of us. Great to see everybody. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>